My name is Ed Lazowska. I'm the Bill and Melinda Gates Chair of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Washington and the Director of the UW Science Institute. And I'm delighted to be here today with my colleagues from Berkeley, NYU, the Moore Foundation, and the Sloan Foundation uh, to announce a new collaborative initiative in data science supported by a $37.8 million commitment from the two foundations and uh, corresponding commitments from the various universities. This initiative has been uh, in the gestation period for more than a year. The foundation selected three university partners six months ago, and over the past six months, since that time, we've been working together to structure this as a true collaboration. It's uh, an incredibly exciting initiative for all of us, uh, and uh, we're delighted to be able to share it with you and others today. So let me uh, talk a bit about the big data rev revolution. Of course, all of you in this room are well familiar with it. Uh, you know, exponential improvements in technology and algorithms are, are creating this revolution. We see a proliferation of sensors. We see the creation of all information in digital form. We see dramatic cost reductions in computation, in storage, uh, dramatic increases in bandwidth, algorithmic breakthroughs in areas such as machine learning. And as you've heard earlier, when we say big data, we don't just mean big in terms of volume. We mean big in terms of velocity, and we mean big in terms of variety. Variety is uh, the complexity, the dimensionality, and honestly, the dirtiness of the data that we have to deal with. So every field of discovery is transitioning from data poor to data rich. Uh, the big data revolution is, of course, transforming all aspects of our society. You heard about many of them from Tom Khalil uh, earlier. It's transforming healthcare. It's transforming uh, environmental stewardship, energy, transportation. Our particular focus in this initiative is scientific discovery. And we see this in every field, in astronomy, physics, oceanography, biology, sociology, economics, neuroscience, many more. Uh, my longtime friend Jim Gray referred to the four paradigms of discovery, as Jim put it. Uh, for many, many centuries, uh, science was focused on uh, empirical and experimental work, observing and describing the way the world operated. For the past few hundred years, there's been a theoretical branch to discovery as well, right, based on models and generalizations. Fifty years ago, computational science, numerical computational science came along, and it has been hugely transformational. It takes us to places we can't go. It takes us to uh, the instance after the Big Bang. It takes us to tomorrow's weather. Uh, Jim observed that we're at the dawn of a fourth paradigm. That fourth paradigm is data-intensive science. So the challenge is to add uh, another V to volume, velocity, and variety. That V is value. The ability to extract knowledge from large, heterogeneous, dirty, noisy data sets to move from data to knowledge to action lies at the heart of 21st century discovery. To remain at the forefront, institutions, researchers in all fields have got to have access to state-of-the-art data analysis tools. And these methodologies and tools are going to have to advance rapidly, driven by the needs of scientific discovery. Uh, importantly, data science is driven more by intellectual infrastructure and by software infrastructure, that is, by human capital and by digital capital than by hardware. So the challenge is to capture the full potential of this data-rich world for discovery. And it's become a real daunting hurdle for domain scientists and for the methodologists alike. Success is going to go to those individuals and groups and organizations that combine domain expertise with computational, statistical, and mathematical skills. Uh, data science is already contributing in many important ways to discovery, but there are systemic challenges that, that need to overcome. We need to overcome if we're going to maximize its impact. That's the focus of our project. Of course, many other institutions and organizations are involved in this. Uh, they are our partners in many ways. Uh, we'll build upon each other's work. I think part of what's unique about this collaboration is, first, its scale, uh, and secondly, the fact that it is truly a distributed, collaborative uh, experiment. So we just couldn't be more excited. I'll now uh, introduce my colleague, Saul Perlmutter from Berkeley. Oh, thank you, Ed. So, at, at this point, uh, with all these great advances, one can find oneself wondering, so what more needs to be done? Uh, when, you know, why aren't we already there? 
And uh, so I was going to describe a, a number of the elements that we uh, see as real opportunities to explore with this particular initiative um, that we think can help in the academic environment in particular for uh, the science that we're trying to, to accomplish. Uh, to begin with, I think most people who've worked in a, in a university um, know that there is this uh, standing problem of interdisciplinary uh, uh, reward, um, which is that if you have somebody, say, who has a strong science uh, expertise, but also a strong um, computer science expertise, they are therefore less tenurable, less likely to advance in, in the uh, university setting um, because it's hard to, uh, to evaluate them on either one or the other of their, of their skills we would like to start exploring ways to make um, that actually a more valuable uh, and more rewarded uh, role and, and career path in the universities. We find that as, a, as researchers, it's very difficult um, to find the people that we need to work in the research groups at both the undergraduate, graduate, and then postdoctoral level um, who have just even the basic data science training that's now standard in, that you need to approach the data analysis problems of any good research group. And uh, that's obviously silly. I mean, it seems that uh, this is what a university should be good at. We should be able to at least get that basic, uh, the basic training available uh, to the undergraduates and the graduate students as they're coming in into these, uh, at these different levels so that we aren't using that as a criterion in which we choose who comes to our, joined our research group for, to do research. Uh, but that's just a given and then we were able to you know, find you know, more de depth in, uh, in our selection. There is a standing problem that, that I think uh, is, is uh, very clear when you try to do research, even in the areas of science which are the most advanced in using uh, data science techniques, um, which is that we are basically constantly in a position of working with a, you know, shifting sands of personnel who come into program, have uh, a target of a thesis, a paper they have to write, a conference they have to go to, and they get the programming and the, and the data you know, science done to the point that is needed, then they graduate, move on, and we start over again with the next generation. This is not a progressive field in that sense. It's a little bit like trying to do uh, science before you invented the peer-reviewed journal. And we can do much better than this. It seems to me that there should be ways uh, to make it possible to build on what the previous group members have done, the previous people in the field have done, or even people in other, in other areas uh, at the university or in industry for that matter. So to do that, we would like to explore uh, frameworks and, and, and approaches that might make it easier to find what's already out there, first of all, and uh, to find it with, a, with good vetting, good evaluations of what's, of what's there, what's useful for different purposes at different times. We, on the, on the flip side, also need to make it easier to contribute and to, uh, to put new uh, ideas and, and new methodologies, new code um, out into the world and have it be well maintained and, and once more vetted and, uh, and made available um, for the next generations within groups or outside um, in, in other areas. We've seen, uh, I think in the years, uh, for many of us have been probing since you know, with the, the early 70s, some probably before, uh, and my sense is that the basic feel of what it means to do a, a data analysis problem uh, hasn't changed that much. We, there are a few advances here and there, but the basic feel of what it's like to do analysis I don't think has become much more fluent, much easier um, than it ever was. And uh, you still, I, I think the, the number that's quoted is uh, people spend 80% of their effort in, in developing, uh, in just managing the data, moving the data around. And it's uh, you know, clear that we could do much better than this to focus the attention of scientists on their science problem rather than on the you know, trivialities and the, and the very messy um, steps that are necessary just to get your data to the point that you can actually understand what you're doing and to make a plot. So I, I think there's actually some real interesting areas there to try and think of how to abstract again and ask what would be a, a better environment to be working in. Clearly this isn't the problem, as, none, as many of the problems we'll be describing that we expect to solve, but we hope that we at least be able to identify the problem more clearly so as to, uh, to pose it so that it could be at, then funded and, and approached. Now, all this um, feels like a wonderful opportunity for a university to bring people together. There's uh, ways, um, you know, these topics are the topics that people share in common across big swaths of the university, 
and there's this standard problem at a university that you don't really get to hear what's happening across the other side of campus. And we're hoping that actually using this as an opportunity to physically bring people together um, will al allow a much more fertile and exciting period uh, for the, in, in an academic world. Uh, on the, the uh, more difficult side of bridging gaps, um, there's this standing problem that what is interesting to the computer scientists um, doesn't necessarily get down to the level of detail that's needed by the research scientist in, in approaching a, a scientific problem. And similarly, what's interesting to the research scientist um, doesn't necessarily extend to all of the elements of the uh, programming and the, and the computing uh, data science that's needed um, to accomplish the goals. And so that big, you know, dirty middle is, uh, is often missed. And, and we clearly need to weigh ways, first of all, to identify the fun, interesting parts of, the, of those problems. But if, even when they're not interesting, they've got to get done, and we should make it possible to do it much, uh, much more fluently if we can. If we do all of this right, then I think we have a, a, a chance to bring new people and new subdisciplines into data science who have not been there before. I think that that includes uh, disciplines where it's just not been part of their training and their background to use, uh, to use, science in, in this, uh, to use data science in this way. And I think there's many opportunities um, across the university for that. And also in includes some of the uh, underrepresented, uh, underrepresented minorities and, and, uh, and women who I think um, could be much more welcomed into these fields than has been traditionally the case. Many of these fields have actually been you know, very you know, male dominated in my, in my experience. And, uh, and I think this might actually be a, a nice chance to rectify that and to, and to change the model a little bit. Now, everything I'm talking about so far um, are just the opportunities that we've noticed and identified through you know, just introspection. And I think here, too, we could be a little bit more systematic. We should be actually doing the ethnography necessary to watch what is it that scientists are actually doing, what are research groups doing, and what is holding them up. Where are the slow points? What's, what are the, uh, the barriers um, to, to you know, rapid advance in these data science rich areas? And I, I think that you know, many of the things we've discussed will probably come out of that, but I'm hoping there'll be some surprises and that'll turn out there are things that we actually haven't caught that could be perhaps low hanging fruit to allow us to move forward and to speed up the, the, uh, the field. So these are some of the, uh, the opportunities I think that we see, and let me pass on to Jan to discuss how we're, how we're talking about approaching it. And uh, introducing Jan, Jan LeCun from New York University. Thank you, Saul. So Saul talked a lot about the problems we're facing, and uh, I'm gonna try to talk a little bit about the solutions, or at least the efforts we're gonna do to try to overcome, overcome those, those problems. So this is really a, a deep collaboration between researchers in science on one side and on uh, the methods on the other side. Uh, so by the, by the sciences, we mean the physical sciences, life sciences, environmental sciences, uh, neuroscience, um, as well as social science. Uh, social science is actually a big component of this in the sense that uh, the approach, uh, sort of data-driven approaches to social sciences are on the cusp of perhaps revolutionizing uh, some of the fields of uh, social sciences as they have in, in biology, for example. And then on the me method side, uh, it's a combination of computer science, statistics, and uh, applied mathematics, and even pure mathematics. So we, we've, we've had some ex experience at all three institutions in uh, developing uh, uh, projects that uh, bring together people from those various fields, and uh, we're, we're, we're hoping to define new ways of doing science uh, with, this, uh, with this new initiative. Um, so um, w w the core goals that we are after uh, during this initiative is, uh, of course, sustaining interactions between people in the sciences and the methods and across the sciences. It turns out there are methods that are developed in one context that can be reused in another context. And uh, th there's nothing like uh, getting people to meet on a regular basis uh, for sparks to fly between them. Um, so a second very important goal is to uh, establish new data science career paths uh, that are long-term and sustainable. Uh, both Ed and Sol referred to that uh, issue that there are people who will be um, uh, essential to this, uh, to this enterprise who currently don't nicely fit in uh, uh, pre-specified or existing slots within, the, uh, within academia. Uh, so in particular, uh, people who are in between two fields or have uh, joint uh, expertise in the methods and the sciences 
um, uh, that, that Saul referred to already, as well as people who develop tools whose goal is to accelerate the progress of science, and they play a very important role. Um, their impact is measured by uh, whether the software is used or whether the tool they develop are, are, are being disseminated and, and used, uh, and not necessarily by how many papers they've published. Uh, so we have to build an, an ecosystem of analytical tools uh, that will uh, uh, allow us to share methods as well as uh, 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 software and infrastructure to accelerate the progress of science, uh, uh, at least data-driven science. So um, there are barriers between, uh, uh, between those two sides of the, of the equation, if you want. And uh, what we're going to do is try to build bridges or tunnels uh, uh, between, those, uh, between the two sides of, um, uh, of, of the methodology and the sciences on the other side. Uh, and we're going to organize ourselves in six working groups that are each going to try to focus on a particular obstacle uh, that, that separates the two, uh, the two sides. So the six working groups are composed, each, uh, each of them is composed uh, of uh, three to six faculty from each university uh, working together uh, and trying to uh, sol solve the problem um, as, as they show. And this, uh, if, if you haven't figured it out already, this initiative is more about organizing ourselves than about focusing on particular uh, problems in science. We'll do the science, but really what we are trying to figure out here is how to organize ourselves so that the science goes fast. Um, so let's, let me start with career paths. So this is one of the main problems we're going to have to, to solve, create long, uh, uh, sustain, sustainable uh, long-term career trajectories for people who are in between fields uh, and people who focus on, cr on creating tools, as I mentioned earlier. And this is uh, complicated, of course, by the current way we measure impact in, in science, which is by publications and not necessarily by how many people download your software and use it. Uh, so we have to change those metrics a little bit. And so we'll et establish uh, the, the notion of data scientists um, uh, within universities, as well as uh, what we call data science fellows. Uh, so kind of a new category of scientists, you, if you want, who uh, are in between uh, uh, methodologies and, and, and the sciences. A very important component of this uh, is, is education. So there's a huge gap to fill, uh, which was uh, referred to earlier, uh, on uh, educating data scientists, not just for science, but also for industry. It's very difficult to hire data scientists now if you are uh, in industry. You want to hire people who have both the expertise in uh, computational science, uh, in computer science, as well as in the required mathematical and statistical uh, uh, domains as well as the expertise in the uh, specific domain that, uh, that, that you're trying to treat. So what we're going to try to do is uh, create new educational program that essentially have all three components, the mathematics and statistics on one side, the computation on the other side, and the domain science on the, thir on the third side. And data science is really at the intersection of all three. Uh, this Venn diagram was borrowed from uh, Drew Conway, who is a former PhD student at uh, New York University, who is a political scientist who uses uh, data analysis to, um, to derive knowledge from, from data. And he drew this, uh, uh, this little diagram that's been running around the, uh, the web and it's been very popular to explain what the concept of data science is. Uh, so all three institutions are, are going to uh, create uh, uh, educational program as well as boot camps and summer school. At NYU, we've, we've already created a master's program in data science that started this uh, September. Um, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, uh, seeing how well the students uh, will do in the uh, larger world. Uh, the second point is software tools and environment. This is a, a crucial aspect, of course, of uh, progress in data science. How do we accelerate the progress of science by providing the right tools for the scientists so that they spend more time doing the science and less time managing data or writing software? Um, and it's a, it's a major issue because um, software produced by scientists is, ver is very often often in the sense that uh, it's very difficult to maintain it in the long run. And so we have to set up organizations with people whose uh, uh, main uh, drive is to provide uh, uh, software that's actually used uh, by, by other people, not just by themselves. Um, reproducibility and open science is also a very important aspect of it. We're, we're, uh, through software and through practices, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, establish ways to um, 
uh, promote open science so that uh, methodologies that are developed within one context are transferred uh, in another one field, from one field to another, from one university to another. And so examples uh, of this would, would include the development of uh, best practices for, for reproducibility, uh, traceability of data, and, uh, and building support uh, for, for that in, in, in terms of software. And then as to, uh, another very important aspect is working space. So this is how we would uh, promote uh, interactions between people by co-locating them as much as possible in the same space. Uh, each of our universities are, are committed to providing dedicated space to uh, data science in different ways. Uh, at New York University, in the Center for Data Science, uh, we are uh, uh, putting together a, a center with, in the long run, we'll have on the order of 20 faculty with our students and postdocs and visitors and, uh, and, and scientists and tools, tool developers, uh, uh, some in the science, uh, some in the, uh, in the methods, uh, all co-located in the same place. Um, uh, Berkeley has the new Institute for Data Science, uh, where, uh, again, scientists and uh, tool builders and, 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 and methods people will, uh, will interact. And University of Washington has the uh, Data Science Studio um, uh, that plays a very, very similar role. Uh, another aspect of this that we're going to develop uh, across our, our campus and, within, and, and between our campuses is uh, video wormholes. So uh, this would be uh, ways to uh, promote um, or, or enable uh, uh, interactions, spontaneous interactions, where you have a wall that's on all, a video wall that's on all the time, and when people show up in a, in a room at a university, uh, on the other side of the same wall, uh, you can start uh, uh, talking and interacting. Data science, in the sense, will be the great unifier. People will come together, people from different fields will come together because they have in common the same, uh, the same problem to solve and the same methods uh, that they may use. And then last but not least uh, is, is trying to figure out uh, how, how we're doing. Uh, studying what scientists actually do when they, um, when they engage in data-driven science. Um, and, and trying to identify the main obstacles so that we can uh, perhaps provide the tools and the organization that will solve uh, the problem and maximize the e efficiency of, uh, of uh, science development. So we are certainly at the dawn of uh, a, new, a new era uh, in discovery and learning, the, the fourth paradigm, uh, as, as Ed mentioned. And we had to realize that uh, the amount of data that uh, is coming to us is increasing exponentially at a very high speed uh, correlated with the uh, speed at which our storage systems increase in capacity. And it's a very, very large exponent. Um, the amount of brain power on the planet does not increase at the same speed. Um, it, ex it actually increases exponentially, but the exponent is very small. So pretty soon we'll be submerged by data and uh, it will have to be the case that most of the knowledge in the world will have to be extracted by machines. There's just not enough brain power on the planet to do it. Uh, so we have to develop the tools for that. We have to develop the methodologies for this. Everything is to be invented. And this is a challenge that we are up to. We're extremely uh, uh, excited about, about this opportunity. In fact, uh, what we're trying to do here is really answer big questions, big scientific questions of our time. Uh, questions like that, Sol has been working on, for example, what's the universe made of? Um, and a lot of the experiments that people do in physics today uh, essentially uh, rely on analyzing gobs and gobs of data. Uh, that's true of uh, uh, certainly cosmology, that's true of high energy physics, the discovery of the Higgs boson, that's true of many, uh, many domains and increasingly large number of domains. Uh, what are the mechanisms behind uh, life uh, is a big question, of course. So this is one of the domains where data science has already uh, had a big impact with genomics and bioinformatics. Uh, so to some extent is uh, already ahead of the game. Another big scientific question is uh, how does the brain work? And uh, there is a lot of initiatives, uh, you know, government initiatives as well as uh, uh, others uh, to uh, map the brain, map the activity, trying to reproduce brain function in artificial systems, understand the principles behind intelligence. That's the big, one of the big challenges of the next few years. Um, and, and the la last one is uh, perhaps the most uh, uh, challenging, perhaps, uh, in some ways, 
uh, because of the complexity of the systems we'll be studying, is how do we understand human behavior and, and societies? And this is where perhaps one of the big revolutions will occur in data science uh, in terms of its application to, uh, to uh, social science. And uh, I call uh, Josh Greenberg. <laughs> Um, so I'm Josh Greenberg. I direct the Alfred B. Sloan Foundation's program in digital information technology. Um, I just wanted to uh, say very quickly, um, uh, underscore two particular things uh, from, the, from the presentation today and things that make this a particularly exciting collaboration from the perspective of, of, of a foundation. The first is that a lot of what we do is fund individual projects. We fund advancements in a particular field or in a particular um, technology. And um, we came to believe, uh, in collaboration with colleagues at the Moore Foundation and, and elsewhere, um, that there also needs to be um, changes and, and real attention focused on the institutions in which research happens. That um, if we don't engage institutions as, as these three um, are, then um, then we won't see the true impact of the, the kinds of funding and the, the, the kinds of advancements that we'd like to see. The second point that I'd just like to make is this really underscored, this was a, a fantastic collaboration, the process with the colleagues at the Moore Foundation um, through the selection process um, and really over the past six months, <coughs> excuse me, where not just at the faculty level but at the administration level, um, these three universities have been um, tremendous partners committing um, really remarkable resources, and it's not just the three people here. There, there's, there are dozens of, of, of um, colleagues at, at, at every level of the university um, who've, who've been participating and helping to shape this. Um, so it's just been very exciting and inclusive to see. Chris. Great. Hello, my name is Chris Menzel, and I'm the project member, um, one of the project members in the Moore Foundation that got this project started. And just to follow on what Josh said, you know, this um, collaboration is um, really a five-part collaboration and something that was born out of a desire to really support the people that are at the heart of data-driven research. These multidisciplinary researchers um, really are the focus of um, all of the efforts that we're um, putting forth over the next five years. Uh, the Moore Foundation sees supporting these people as a critical barrier in advancing science across many of the basic research domains that um, the foundation supports. Um, we're tackling this through a data-driven discovery initiative. This institutional partnership is the first step for us and we plan to announce um, other efforts, um, other um, opportunities in the near future to directly support the people and practices um, involved in data-driven research. Um, I'd just like to um, just extend just a personal thanks to um, the, my colleagues on the stage, um, their personal efforts over the last uh, dozen or, or so uh, weeks has been just um, astronomical. So uh, thank you, um, thank you for everybody, all of your help and um, all of your um, dedication to um, data-driven research. Bef and I forgot one thing, we're all very um, cognizant of all of the other efforts that are out in the world. And um, particularly in this room, many of the projects and um, collaborations, centers that agencies, industry, and um, private um, um, and research organizations, um, we plan to operate with you. Um, we plan to um, share what we're learning and to practice open science and, and look forward to um, collaborating with you all um, over, the uh, over the next years. So thank you very much.